Up in the morning and out to school The teacher is teaching the golden rule Hi everybody, I hope you had a nice day. And you know what, it's kind of the time of the year when summer's starting to end and school's beginning for some people. So I'm gonna read two books, one about the ocean, Big Al. So this is about Big Al. Some of you are going to the, the beach and swimming pools and trying to swim all you can before fall comes. So let's read a story about Big Al. In the wide blue sea, there was a very friendly fish named Big Al. You could not find a nicer fish. Big Al was also very scary. He looks a little bit scary, doesn't he? Oh my. Other fish seemed to have at least one friend. Some had many, but Big Al had none. He did not really blame the other fish. How could he expect little fish to trust a great big fish with eyes and skin and teeth like his? So Big Al was lonely and he cried big salty tears into the big salty sea. Oh, poor Big Al. Big Al really wanted friends, so he worked at it. First, he tried wrapping himself up with seaweed. He thought it was a great disguise, but no one else did. Who wants to stop and talk to a floating plant that has big, sharp teeth? Then he thought that if he puffed himself up round, the other fish would laugh and see how clever and silly he could be. All they saw was how big he could be and they steered clear of Big Al. Very early one morning, Big Al went down to the bottom and flopped and wiggled himself into the sand until he was almost covered up. He looked much smaller when other fish came near. Big Al talked and joked with them and had a delightful time. But then one scratchy little grain of sand got stuck in his gills and he, and he, and he, sn and he, and he, he sneezed. And when the clouds of sand cleared away, all the other fish were gone, just like that. Big Al even changed his color one day so he could look like he belonged to a school of tiny fish that were passing by. He bubbled along with them for a while, laughing and feeling he, like he was just one of the crowd. But he was so big and clumsy that when all the tiny fish darted to the left and then quickly back to the right, Big Al just plowed straight ahead. He went bumping and thumping right into the little fish and before he could even say, excuse me, they were gone. And he was all alone again, sadder than ever. Just when Big Al was starting to be sure that he would never have a single friend, something happened. He was floating along sadly, watching some of the smaller fish and was wishing they would come closer. As he watched a net drop down silently from above and in an instant, oh, they were all caught. Oh no. Big Al forgot all about being lonely and he forgot all about being sad. His eyes bulged out bigger and rounder than ever and with a mighty flip of his tail he opened his mouth and charged straight at the net. The net was strong but Big Al was stronger. He ripped right through it and all the little fish rushed out through the hole. But when Big Al tried to turn around and go out of the hole, he got all tangled up in the net. He was stuck. The net went higher and higher toward the bright surface of the sea, and the little fish watched Big Al as he disappeared above them. When the little fish were able to speak again, all they talked about was the huge, wonderful fish that had saved them. How great to be free! But what a shame that the big fellow had been captured. Just then, there was a tremendous crashing splash above them, and the small fish dashed away. Was it the net again? Not at all. It was Big Al. Those fishermen took one look at him, and they threw him right back into the ocean. And now, there is one huge, puffy, scary, fierce-looking fish in the sea who has more friends than anyone else.
Big Al. Look at all those friends that Big Al has. Oh, what a great story. Look out, kindergarten. Here I come. Who's going to kindergarten this year? Some of you are. I think Shane's going to kindergarten. And let's see. Hmm, Logan's going to kindergarten. So this is... Watch out, kindergarten. Look out, kindergarten. Here I come. Wake up, dear, said Henry's mom. It's the first day of kindergarten. Oh, boy. Let's go, said Henry. He had been getting ready for this day all year. Not so fast, said his mom. First, you need to wash up and get dressed. So Henry brushed his teeth the way his dentist had shown him, and he washed behind his ears. Then he buttoned his shirt and snapped his jeans and almost tied his shoes. He's doing a good job. Okay, I'm all ready for kindergarten, said Henry. Not so fast, said his mom. First, you need a good breakfast. So Henry ate three pancakes and a bowl of fruit, and he drank a big glass of milk. Good breakfast. Now I'm ready to go, said Henry. Not so fast, said his mom. You still need to pack up your supplies. So Henry packed pencils, scissors, crayons, paper, glue, an apple, and a photo of his mom and dad. Look at that. In case he got lonely. Now I'm ready, said Henry. Wow, he's excited, isn't he? What do you think we'll do first, asked Henry. Do you think we'll paint? Sure you will, said his mom, just like at home. Good, said Henry. What else will we do? You'll probably learn your ABCs, said his mom. Hey, I already know the letters in my name, said Henry. What will we do after that? Well, you'll sing songs and play games. And you might practice counting, said his mom. One, two, three, flowers, said Henry. I can count to ten because we practice counting with buttons. What comes next? Well, you'll make things in arts and craft and you'll read stories. But I can't read, said Henry. That's okay, said his mom. You'll start by listening. Reading comes later. Here we are, said Henry's mom. It's so big, said Henry. What if I what if I get lost? Remember we found your room and your cubby at kindergarten roundup, said his mom. But you can always ask a teacher for help. Yes, you can. When Henry got to his room and saw lots of new faces, he said, I want to go home. Oh, it's okay, Henry. Why don't you come in and look around, said his teacher, Mrs. Bradley. So Henry looked around. He saw the art corner. He saw letters and numbers that he knew. Wow. He saw a bookcase full of books and he met a new friend to play with. Well, what do you think, asked Henry's mom. I... I think I might stay for a while, said Henry. I think he's feeling better because kindergarten is going to be fun. Oh, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth, fifth, every grade is fun. I always love school, and I hope that's how you'll feel about school this year, too. This is one more book I'm going to read. It's called Never Take a Shark to the Dentist. <gasps> Some of you might have dentist appointments to go to before school starts. Get your teeth cleaned. Have the dentist check them. See that everything's good with your teeth. And this cause says never take a shark to the dentist. Ooh. 
Never take a shark to the dentist. <gasps> that would be a big job for a dentist. And sharks always grow new teeth, don't they? Look how far back they were standing from the shark to examine them. It says, never sit next to a porcupine on the subway. Oh, what could he do to you? Ouch. Oh, ah, you're poking me. <laughs> this one says, never go shopping for shoes with a centipede. Oh, look at all the shoes he'd need. It'd take forever to get that many shoes, wouldn't it? Oh, my. And never knit a hat for a moose. With his antlers, look at how his hat has to stretch. Oh, and it's really not even keeping his head warm, is it? Look at that little frog. <laughs> These are kind of silly things to think about. Never invite an ant to a picnic. Oh, look at that. Ants like to eat all of our food, don't they? But sometimes, even if we don't invite them, they come. Never take a giraffe to the movies. <gasps> Look at that long neck, and it's blocking the screen, making a shadow. How silly would that be? Never play checkers with a spider. Oh my goodness, spiders have eight legs, and they could beat us, couldn't they? They can make all those moves on the checkerboard. What fun it would be, though, to play him. Never share your lunch with a pig. Oh, look at that pig. He's just pigging out, isn't he? How funny. Never play double dutch with a grasshopper. Oh, he just went leaping up there. He's good at jumping. Never hold hands with a lobster. Ouch! Oh, that would hurt, wouldn't it? Never take a goat with you to the library. <gasps> what has that goat done? Oh my, look at all the books he's eaten. That bad goat. And never give him, give him off a sweater for his birthday. Moths like to eat sweaters and things that are made out of wool, and they would just probably eat the whole sweater up. And never go to the bank with a raccoon. Can you see that raccoon? <gasps> Look at his little mask. It looks like he's going to hold up the bank, and they're all raising their hands like they think he's a robber, and he's not. And But always go shopping with a pelican. Look at all that he can hold. And today when we read this book earlier, Nathan told me that a pelican's beak or pouch, I guess what you call it, can hold three gallons of water. Wow, that's a lot. So look at all the things that that pelican could help us with if we were shopping. We wouldn't need a shopping bag, would we? So that was just kind of a short book never take a shark to the dentist and other things not to do that are kind of fun to think about could you think of a fun thing like that yeah think of some things and use your imagination so i'm gonna say good night and i love you and let me throw you a kiss i miss you all and continue to be good readers and listen to mom and dad and get ready for the best school year of your life. It's going to be a great one. Good night. I love you. Amen.